Do you have a light dimmer in your home, a little knob on the wall that you can turn and take the lights in the lounge room or the dining room down for a nice romantic dinner party? Or then bring them back up again to see what you've eaten. We have lots of light dimmers in the television studio here attached to these lights so that we can take the lights down or up for special effects just for you. I'm going to show you how to make your very own light dimmer for less than a dollar with odds and ends around the home. Here's what you'll need. A block of wood first of all, a couple of torch batteries, new or used, a rubber band, some sticky tape and a few bent paper clips and some drawing pins and a globe. I've coloured the globe with a red felt pen but that's not necessary, you can use an ordinary one if you like. Now if you have a look at the way I've arranged these things, maybe you'll be able to guess what we're going to do. It's really a bit like a torch on a block of wood. The two torch batteries are taped together so that they touch each other. That rubber band holds a bent paper clip on this end and also another one on that end. They come up to drawing pins that are pushed into the block of wood and you'll notice if you look at the globe that uh, the drawing pin touches the base of the globe and then another bent paper clip touches that metal part that goes up the side of the globe and that goes down to another drawing pin. So we have almost a complete circuit except for that gap across there. Now, when a torch is switched on, tiny little particles called electrons, too small to see, flow from this end, the bottom end of one of the batteries, up through the wire, and if that, if that would join that space across there, they'd flow th through there, through the little filament in the globe, and back to this end of the battery. But nothing's happening here right now. However, if we take something like, let's try a copper nail, and put that across between the gap, it acts very much like a switch. It allows electrons to flow through in that direction and so the globe glows. We say that copper is a conductor of electricity so we'll put that in that group there. Let's try a straightened out paper clip that's made of steel. Put it across, that's also a conductor of electricity. We'll try a piece of fuse wire and you guessed it, that is also a good conductor of electricity. Piece of string, can you guess what will happen here? Of course that doesn't conduct electricity so that goes in the other group. Plastic pen doesn't conduct electricity. What about a piece of aluminium foil? That does. Do you notice anything about the conductors and non-conductors yet? Let's try a rubber band. And that doesn't. That's a non-conductor. Here's a screwdriver. First of all the metal part. Yes that conducts electricity. The plastic handle doesn't. So I guess that belongs between the two groups. How about a wooden ice cream stick? No, that doesn't. That's a non-conductor. Here's a pencil. What do you think will happen here? I'll place that between the two drawing pins. No electricity flows. But keep watching it. Keep watching it. I'm going to do something to it and see if you can guess, out, guess what's happened. Now the globe glows. How come? We thought wood was a non-conductor. Maybe you guess what I did the pencil. I shaved the wood away so that actually when I put it down that way, it's the lead of the pencil that's touching between the two drawing pins. Not really lead, it's graphite, a form of carbon. And you could use that to make your dimmer, but I've got something that's even better. Here's a piece of steel wool, a tuft of steel wool, a scouring pad. If I place that between the two drawing pins, that allows electricity to pass quite well. But if I take a single strand of that steel wool, very, very thin, I wonder if that'll slow down the movement of electrons. Here it is here. I've already separated it out and I've placed it, placed it on a piece of tape, that end. The reason for that is I'm going to put the piece of tape down in that position there, then I'll stretch the little strand of steel wool around that drawing pin. First of all, I'll touch it on the other drawing pin and watch the globe. You can see that it's glowing, but only just. We say that that thin strand of steel wire has more resistance than a thick strand of the same metal would have. Now I'm going to tape the other end of that strand of wire to the corner of the block, not touching the drawing pin. Then I'll take the piece of fuse wire, and we saw earlier that this is a good conductor of electricity, it allows electrons to pass through readily, and I'm going to arrange that so that the electrons must pass some of the way through the thin strand of steel wool wire. First of all, I'll place it up near this end of the steel wool wire, and you'll notice that the globe glows brightly. But look what happens when I slide it back down that thin wire. Can you see what's happening to the globe? 
getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it's almost out when it gets to the other end of the wire. To bring it up bright again, we simply slide it back up towards the globe. And it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Bring it down the other way and it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So there it is, your dollar dimmer. But I'm not sure how it'll look on the dining room table.